I'd like to look at two exercises from section 3.4 with you. This is exercise five. And it says use universal modus tollens to fill in a valid conclusion. So we've got all irrational numbers are real numbers. One over zero is not a real number. And then they're asking us to fill in the blank there. So let me say this, um, in this section, you're gonna see um, discussion of universal modus tollens, universal modus ponens, um, and uh, what we see in those cases is the first premise talks about all of a set, and then we focus in on one particular element. Um, when we talk about modus tollens, we normally think of that first premise as being written in an if-then form. Um, but here where we're talking about sets, it won't always be expressed that way. But notice that first premise could be written that, I'm going to say for all expressions, x, if x is an irrational number, then x is a real number. So it is possible to to uh, rewrite that in an if-then form. Uh, now, I, I used expressions as our set um, because the element that we focus in on, one over zero, is an undefined expression. Um, and the second premise says one over zero is not a real number. So looking at the first premise, and keeping in mind we're talking about universal modus tollens, the correct conclusion would be that 1 over 0 is not an irrational number. Um, now, not to get too much into the, the content of the argument rather than the structure of the argument, um, saying 1 over 0 is a, a rational number would not be saying the same thing here. Um, in the set of real numbers, you've got rational numbers and you've got irrational numbers. But 1 over 0 is not in the set of real numbers at all, so it doesn't fit into either category. Um, so uh, I just wanted to note that before we move on to the next example. Now the next example here is exercise 25 in section 3.4. And it says indicate whether the argument is valid or invalid. Support your answer by drawing diagrams. And this gets into a topic within section 3.4 where they talk about using Venn diagrams to evaluate whether an argument is valid or invalid. And this is something that can be done when you're talking about arguments which discuss sets um, because you can, you know, make your diagram so that you've got, you know, the sets represented um, and whether they overlap or not. Okay, and uh, in terms of evaluating validity, remember that what it means to be a valid argument is that whenever the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. So that's, that makes an argument valid. So in terms of diagrams, the question to ask yourself is, could I draw a diagram that makes the premises true, but also makes the conclusion false? If there's any way to do that, you have an invalid argument. If there's no way to do that, then you have a valid argument. Okay. So you're, it's not about just coming up with whatever diagram comes to mind that fits the premises. What you're trying to determine is, can I draw the diagram that makes premises true and a conclusion false? Okay, because whether you can or whether you can't, that's gonna answer the question about validity. Okay, so the argument that we're given is this. No college cafeteria food is good. No good food is wasted. Therefore, no college cafeteria food is wasted. Okay, well, 
in terms of drawing a diagram, the first premise is telling us that we've got two sets, the set of cafeteria food and the set of good food, and those should not overlap. Okay, in order to make that first premise true, those sets must, must not overlap. And similarly for the second one, we can talk about the set of good food and the set of wasted food. And if the second premise is true, those two sets must not overlap. So one way that you could draw a diagram that includes those three sets is you could draw them all disjoint from each other, okay? Uh, all non-overlapping. However, that's not the only way that you could draw it and make the, can, the premises true. Um, you could also draw it so that cafeteria food and wasted food do overlap because there's nothing in the premises that says that they don't. Okay, so, so we've got, you know, one way of drawing it and we've got another way of drawing it. And remember, the question is, can you draw a diagram that makes the premises true but the conclusion false? And what we see here in the second diagram is yes, you can draw it so that the premises are true and the conclusion is false. That means the argument's invalid. Okay. Um, so diagrams can be really helpful for this type of argument to determine validity, but just keep in mind um, what you know how to do that. It's not just about coming up with whatever diagram comes to mind. Um, hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.